Good morning, Texoma, and thanks for joining us for another look inside Texoma. We are going to celebrate Veterans Day by chatting with retired colonels in the United States Air Force. We have retired Colonel Rita Vokes and also retired Colonel Joan Gray. So we appreciate both of you taking time to be here today, and it's just been a pleasure getting to know each of you, and I'm so excited today to share their stories and really focusing on women this morning and what they've done in the military and how far it's come and the role that they continue to play to help out so many every single day. Both of you live right here in Texoma. Dear friends, each of you, both retired colonels, and it's an interesting story how you two met and how you continued to reconnect. Well, I was uh, at Wiesbaden Air Base Medical Center in Germany as a pediatric nurse practitioner and Joan was the supervisor of all the outpatient clinics and she would come down to check on all of her nurses and made sure that we had enough staffing and that everything was going great. So not even here in the Texoma area, but no. this is where you reconnected, correct? Right. <laughs> at uh, Metro Photo. She came in while I was also being a customer and she looked at me and I looked at her and I said, hi Rita. And so she said, what are you doing here? I said, I live here. Well, that was the beginning. Wow. And um, yes, we go back a long way uh, to 1978. 78. So 78 was where in Germany yes. that you both first met up. So I love how Texoma has brought two friends who served in the military back together overseas too. Like right. What, right. A, what an interesting story. So Rita, what sparked your interest in this and how did you even get involved? Well, I was at a nursing conference in Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, then that was in 1968 when I uh, uh, went to this nursing conference, and all of the military uh, recruiters were there. And the Air Force recruiter said, how would you like to join the Air Force and get to travel and continue your education? And he told me all about the benefits that the Air Force offered. I said, well, that seems quite intriguing. So I joined the Air Force to see the world and got stationed at Carsville Air Force Base in Fort Worth, Texas. But since then, I've lived all over the world, including two tours in Germany. Wow. I've been to uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota, and uh, primarily in Texas. And I was stationed here at Shepherd Air Force Base in 1988. And uh, I was here for seven years. And I, I think the unique thing is I joined the Air Force to see the world. I graduated from Ryder High School <laughs> and came back and retired in Wichita Falls. And I'm so happy that I did because Wichita Falls and Shepherd have by far the best military civilian community relations of any place I've been stationed wow. throughout the, the career. And that says a lot. I mean, Absolutely. that says a lot about our community. Yes. Because for you to be all over the world mm -hmm. and to still say that, that's quite impressive. And that says a lot about you, Texoma, because you're part of that relationship. Absolutely. And we hear that over and over again, yes. how these families come back here and bring their families, mm -hmm. raise them here in our community. So, you know, that, that's pretty impressive to even hear. So this was home to you yes. before you even started your military career. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And that's pretty neat how you, you've ended it here as well. So kept, kept it back here and obviously mm -hmm. an important location for you. Now, Joan, you did not grow up in Wichita Falls. This has not always been home. No. But it is now. <laughs> it is now. I grew up in New England. I parked my car in the Harvard Yard <laughs> in Massachusetts. And um, I worked at the VA in Rhode Island, uh, the VA hospital. And there was a friend of mine there who said, I'm going to join the Air Force. And I thought, that sounds like a pretty neat thing. So we both went down, except we didn't get the same base. She got another base, and I went to Florida, which I also called Florida at that <laughs> time. But anyway, um, I went there and then got out for a short time, work, worked for a surgeon in Virginia Beach, and came back in and stayed a total of 24 years and had 11 assignments, one of which was in Vietnam. This is a replica of the Women's Memorial in Washington, and I went to this dedication. Uh, with a friend of mine. And it shows a nurse taking care of a patient. But it also shows two other people. And these are probably technicians or they are administrative people because it takes a whole team mm. to make sure that patients are transferred and sent 
of the correct hospitals back in the States. But this represents all women who served in Vietnam. All women, not just nurses. Yeah. Because so. it is a team. And you know, you had mentioned, Joan was so kind and gave me this coin. And I wanted you to share a little bit more about it because you said this is the only coin that is actually for women. Dedicated, dedicated to women. Dedicated to women. To, to women in the Air Force, uh, to, in Vietnam. And then on the back, it shows all of the... The so different branches and stuff. Branches. So how important do you think things like this and this dedication is to really all the women who have served because it wasn't always an easy thing no. for women. I personally think that um, just like in World War II and all the other previous conflicts that we've had, we need to remember our past and learn from that and progress to make the future better mm -hmm. and learn from the things that we've experienced in the past. But uh, when Joan and I both came in the Air Force, um, she was uh, on active duty uh, sooner than I was, but if we had gotten married, we would have had to have gotten out of the Air Force, <laughs> or if we had gotten pregnant, they would have said, oh no, we can't use you. And now we have women serving in all uh, areas of the Air Force, not only in the nurse corps, but we've got uh, female pilots, uh, a lot of different women who are serving in combat uh, situations as well as uh, support situations. And it's really opened up a whole new world for all women in the military, all, all branches that uh, serve our country. Are you amazed, Joan, at how far it's come in just a short amount of time? I mean, how I came, different it was. I came in in 1961 when you were a sparkle in the <laughs> In 1961, as Rita said, you, you, there were so many things that you couldn't do. You had to be single, period. And, um, by the time I think I was in service 12 years, they decided that, okay, you can be married, you can draw double quarters, you can be pregnant, you can have children, you can have your mother-in-law live with you, your mother live with you, whatever. And at 12 years in, I decided that's not for me. I'll just stay single. <laughs> <laughs> stay single. And, and use my own money the way I wanted to use it. So. <laughs> but anyway. And something I think that's really interesting was that along this journey, you're in Japan, and you're a nurse helping the wounded who come in. And lo and behold, you meet someone. And what is the connection to this young man that you're now helping? Well, this young man's name is Eddie, Eddie Kleck. And one of the techs came to me and said to me, this guy's from your hometown. And I thought, no, no. I went to talk to him, and I said, does your mother know you're coming home? He said, no. So I said, I'll have my mother call your mother. And come to find out, we lived about four streets from each other. Wow. And so then he, he reconnected with me 40 years later when he and a buddy decided that they wanted to look me up. And they, it took them a year. It took them one year. But they finally found me in an old high school yearbook and that I was here in Wichita Falls. And he called. And luckily, I was going to New England, uh, to Boston, with the church choir. And he asked if I would meet with him. And I said yes. And it was wonderful. Um, we still keep in contact. That was uh, five years ago. And we email back and forth, and uh, it's, it's a nice friendship. That is an amazing story. It sounds a little bit like a movie that you would see on TV, like a Hallmark right. movie or something, doesn't it? Right. I mean, this nurse over there serving in Japan, this injured soldier comes in. We're not only from the same town, we live a few streets from each other. So right. how important was that to him? Is that what made him want to reconnect? I think so, because he said to his buddy one night, it's 40 years since I was wounded, and there was a nurse from Fall River who took care of me in Japan. But he thought I was a Navy nurse <laughs> until they began to research. And once they researched, and when he called me, he said, please don't hang up. I'm not selling anything, but you took care of me 40 years ago. Well, you know, you wonder if it's some crackpot on the phone. <laughs> 
But anyway, he he was he's a real neat guy, and he keeps in touch with me. He's never married, neither have I, but he's much younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Eddie is is really a neat fella. So, so he's still a, a dear friend to you, would you? He call is him a now? good friend, and so is his buddy, That's that helped him look up. So. And Normal. you know, his buddy spent a year of his life also helping. Why right. did his buddy say that was so important for him to help his friend find you? He said it was a challenge to him <laughs> and that he wanted to find me. Wow. <laughs> so I said, well, you did. You found me. That's the man we need to contact then, huh? If we, right. ever, if we ever have a challenge of our own, put, put him to the test. I just love that story. I think it's so interesting. Thank you. Were you, were you surprised when you heard this? I mean, have you ever had anyone contact you that you've helped? No, but it, it doesn't uh, surprise me at all because uh, I think Joan, as well as so many of us Air Force nurses, we have taken care of so many patients. And just like when I was uh, commander out here at Shepherd, uh, I get reconnected with some of the nursing students that were here. Uh, they were young captains. They, oh, Colonel Vokes, you came to my graduation. And we had a lot of students at Shepherd Air Force Base that yeah. we would graduate. But uh, the one thing that I think Joan and I have both really done for the Air Force Nurse Corps is that we have mentored our young upstart leaders in the Air Force Nurse Corps. And it does us both proud when we see some of the young lieutenants and the captains uh, grow up to be in senior uh, level uh, positions. In fact, uh, Joan knew uh, Barbara Brannon way back when she was a young captain and she retired as a two-star general. Wow. And she always thanks Joan for wow. the mentoring that she got when, when Joan was her supervisor. Wow. So I think uh, in the Air Force Nurse Corps, <laughs> what goes around comes around and I think we all try to pay it forward. We want to make it better for the next generation of Air Force leaders. Wow, that's, that's wonderful. Obviously making a big impact in the lives of others, and I think, you know, it was something that I had read about you, that you just never know the impact that you're really going to make on someone's nope. life. Absolutely. Do you? And obviously, Joan made a big one. Forty-something mm -hmm. plus years later, someone's now looking her up. So yeah. something, something to remember and something to keep in mind. We have so much more to get to this Veterans Day, so stay with us. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Inside Texas.